Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. Everything you see this morning is for sale. Reach out to Team Also, that's me, at thewatchbox.com for purchase pricing, accessories, or additional photographs. If you wish to sell a watch or trade a watch, we are always looking to exchange or build inventory. If you wish to sell a watch or trade a watch, the contact is the same. Reach out to me and my team, T Masso at thewatchbox.com. Okay, I probably overloaded today's show. We have a lot of cool stuff. So we're gonna start with the thumbnail watch. You clicked to see this, and now I have delivered. Second generation Vacheron Constantin overseas chronograph, 42 millimeters in stainless steel by 12.6 millimeters thick. It's a beautifully compact packed watch for all of the features it packs. Now, it's also beautifully hand-finished. As you can see, the hollows of the individual links inboard high polish within sharp crevices and outboard satin finished with a lovely rolled bevel down their side, an extensively hand-finished bracelet and a case to match. Note the bevel across the lug hoods and the case band, the satin finished hoods of the case, the black polish down the sides, and the recesses of the bezel. They actually have a little bit of vertical satin finished contrast with the polish outboard. Screw down crowns, screw down chronograph pushers, 150 meter water resistance. You can see there's a lovely herringbone pattern on the black dial with white gold hands, logo, and indices. The timepiece features the image of the Italian naval training vessel, Amerigo Vespucci, on the reverse side, and inside a soft iron cage that protects the watch from magnetism, 25,000 ampere per meter of shielding, and an 1185 Frédéric Piguet caliber inside. Automatic 40-hour power reserve, quick set date with double date module, and of course a vertical clutch and collar wheel tandem for precise actuation and positive tactile feel. The watch includes a fully sizable bracelet, and by that I mean every individual link is removable here, so you have the ability to tailor it properly to your size, and note that there are half links built in. Throw this watch on the wrist, super comfortable, nicely sized even if your wrist is a bit smaller like mine, and you can see why. The lugs can't down at their edge, but then with the second generation watch, you had a fully pivoted end link to the bracelet with no rigid flare or fight. The third generation bracelet's a bit more rigid and it flares out and creates a bit of virtual diameter across the wrist. This one pulls straight down and wears beautifully and as you can see it's a perfect match even being thin enough that you could easily wear this watch with a cuff and in stainless steel quite practical. Do a quick loom shot here. And you can see this is a day or night sports watch. Very swimmable, very water resistant, and very resistant to magnetism. Now, if you've got a lower price point, but similar wrist size, and you want something from a great brand, how about an independent? How about an independent that is 60 years young this year? This is the Zin 104, 41 millimeters in stainless steel. It's an aviator style watch with a bilingual calendar. It has both German and English days of the week. And I will pull out to the intermediate position, show you the double quick set system. And you can see that it includes both English and German. Your choice. It can speak its native German. It is made in Frankfurt. And of course, the watch reasonably thin for what it is with a bi-directional aviator style bezel. Note that it's a captive bezel construction with the bezel held on by screws so it can't be snapped off accidentally. You can also see it has the iconic Zin case design derived from the EZM1 and 1.1 and I can just demonstrate what that looks like because I have my 1.1 chronograph right here. A watch that's wonderful to wear, 20 ATM, so impressively for a pilot style watch, 200 meters water resistant and super comfortable on the wrist with a nice size, a beautiful Zin made bracelet. They make their cases and their bracelets. And then you can see it sits low enough that you could wear it as a dress watch, a lovely white lacquered dial, handsome syringe style hands for the hours and minutes. And though it's not a dive watch, it does have a number of features, including a fold-out dive extension. Now, because this is also a pilot's watch, it can be used over a thick flight jacket as well as a diving suit. And, of course, we have a display case back, so you can see the 2824-based top-grade movement inside. Jumping over to England, we're going to take a look at something that is British-built and in very small numbers. This is the Bremont Altitude Forum. S301 Heritage Limited Edition. Now, this was created in late 2018, 30 pieces, 40 millimeters in stainless steel for Bremont's Altitude Forum of Owners. So, Bremont's own web forum hosted by the brand, and they did a limited edition run of this watch, which is modified in some important respects from the standard S301. A bit more vintage evocative. It features the red triangle, as many big crown 
dive watches of the 50s and six, early 60s did. Uh, the timepiece, of course, also featuring a no-date dial. The S301 has a date. Rather than the white cathedral-style hands, we have lovely, lustrous, metallic blue. And you can see the image of Felix the cat holding the bomb. Now, he is the symbol of VFA-31, a U.S strike group, but also a corporate motto at Bremont, as they feature a corporate plane, which you can see on the reverse side, the Max Holst Broussard, and that plane that they own actually has the image of Felix the Cat on his side. Now you can see that there is individual numbering out of 30. This is technically called the Altitude Forum SE301, chronometer certified, 300 meters water resistant, ceramic bezel insert, a nice sharp 120 click bezel, a handsome case band as Bremont is wont to create. As you can see, it features a lovely mid-case DLC treatment to create a tonal contrast and thin out the apparent case. Throwing it on the wrist, it's very easy to wear. This is not a large watch. The S301 was introduced as sort of a big crown Submariner tribute in 2017. And you can see the watch wears nice and low on the wrist. It's not too thick. Automatic winding, 38-hour power reserve, chronometer certified, stop seconds, and it features a lovely hardened steel. It's a little bit like Seiko Dia Shield, so hardened steel that on its face is about 400 Vickers. If you combine the metal underneath and the hardened layer atop, the average is about 400 Vickers. Do a quick loom shot here. And you can see that although it is Fotina, there is no loss of luminescence. Now, shifting gears entirely, this is a watch that needs no introduction. Originally launched in 2009, no one could have imagined at the time that the entry-level watch at FP Journe would become the best recognized and the most sought. And even today, while Journe is making about 900 to 950 watches a year, only about 100 of those each year are going to be the Chronomet Bleu. So it is a rare piece. Handsome with its lovely translucent lacquered blue dial, the off-white printing, and it is an off-white cream color for all of the numerals, characters, figures on the dial, and the hands themselves and then a polished blue-gray tantalum case, giving it that feel of precious metal, but with an aesthetic that is unique to this metal. Now, when you flip it over, you can see it's based on the Chronomet Souverain. You have the caliber 1304 here, and it's made of 18 karat rose gold. You can see that there's no apparent connection between the escapement and the barrels, so the drivetrain runs under the dial side, so it's hidden. 56-hour power reserve, six-position adjustment, free sprung, and twin mainspring barrels to even out the torque release from max wind to minimum wind. You can see that Jorn beveling is getting better and better. It now looks truly mirrored, not quite the machined bevels of the brand's early years. It now looks genuinely luxurious. There's a lovely Grand Doge pattern, or barley corn on the base plate, and then adjacent to it, you can see engine turning with Cote de Genève across the bridges and then black polished screws. This is a very easy watch to wear on a smaller wrist at 39 millimeters and ultra thin. It's a watch that you could see easily fits underneath the cuff, and it's not too broad across the wrist at 39 millimeters. Now, I mentioned the Chronomet Souverain, and we can scale down even a little bit more here as I have a rare and discontinued 38 millimeter platinum Chronomet Souverain. Main differences between this and the Chronomet Bleu going to be the power reserve indicator on the dial side. Now, as you can see, on the reverse side, they are almost identical. And you can see that same composition, the bridges and plates in 18 karat rose gold. And then you can see that the timepiece from the reverse side is literally exactly the same. You can also see that this is an older French-made Eleanor case from about 2005 to 2008. These watches would have been made with the hallmarks of both France and Switzerland on them, as well as the maker's mark of Eleanor of the Paris metropolitan area. Jean later bought Eleanor moved it to Switzerland, it became Boitier de Genève, his in-house case factory. At 38 millimeters and super slim, this watch cuts an even more traditional figure on the wrist. I love the combination of white platinum, silver white dial, blued hands, and olive green custom Jean Rousseau strap. Taking a quick look at another option, if you want to go upscale and collect true vintage FP Journe, then you want brass movement era Journe watches. Here again, we have that Eleanor French made case, but with a brass caliber. The caliber, as you can see, 1498, meaning it is 14 French lean, and work on this design started in 1998. That's how Journe names his movements. The barrel, 
underneath the ratchet wheel. You can see there's a lovely extended swan's neck style click spring and click, and then there's a crown wheel adjacent. There's a linear titanium spring that actually acts as a buffer between the barrel and the escapement, and that allows for the first 28 hours of power reserve, this watch to maintain constant balance amplitude, which is essential to the chronometric regularity of a watch. So the Torpion is there for beauty, and the Remontoir is there for accuracy. Free sprung, six position adjusted with an overcoil hairspring, six position adjustment, and overcoil hairsprings not commonly found on Jorn watches, only those whose express intent is chronometry. You'll note the power reserve works backwards. It indicates the hours since you last fully wound the watch in the fashion of vintage marine chronometers or navigation clocks. So zero means zero hours since last fully wound. And you can see this is a Tourbillon Remontoir, the first series of Jorn watches launched in 1999. And this is a Tourbillon Remontoir Series 4. Rose gold dial with a lovely matte finish and a thick varnish on top. You can see there's a little bit of color variation, but this is the natural aging of these early dials. You can also see beautiful flourishes such as black polished cock for the Remontoir system, and then you can see that there is a rounded and black polished cock or half bridge for the Torbjorn cage, which is filigree wire style and itself specular finished or black polished. A truly special watch and a lovely essential F.P. Jorn timepiece from the days of brass calibers. In mid-2004, the movements became rose gold, which sounds appealing. But remember, there are fewer brass calibers, so while gold is worth more as a commodity, brass is worth more as a collectible. This is a 38 millimeter watch, as those first series Tourbillon Remontoir were. Series one, two, three, and four, all 38 millimeters. The steel pieces from 2015, 38 millimeters. Only the ruthenium Tourbillon Remontoir was 40 millimeters. Okay, this is going to be very special because I have not one but two Romain Gautier for your approval. Watches that represent the ultra haute de gamme, literally the best there is in Valet de Jeu finishing. There's a reason this company makes about 50 watches a year. This watch launched in 2017 is called the Insight Micro Rotor, and it was Gautier's first ever automatic watch. Now, this one is special because it is titanium, 39.5 millimeters in grade 5 titanium, immensely scratch resistant, super light, hypoallergenic, and as you can see, an individually numbered 10-piece addition. You can also appreciate the number of inward angles here where two bevels meet and that sharp crease is created. You'll also appreciate that these bridges are absolutely a mile wide at the bevel. Some beveling is relatively narrow, hairline-like, beautifully made, but only visible with a loop or corrective optics. Here, you can see with the naked eye, this is Philippe Dufour level on glage. You can also see a handsome and traditional pocket watch inspired frosting of the bridges. You'll note the screws are not just black polished, they are Romain Gautier's own design, allowing for the application of more torque. He also designs his wheels, which have this circle within a circle motif. And if you look closely, you can see there's a lot of handsome embellishment from the solarization on the back of the rotor to the black polish on the underside of the winding bridge. There's a lot to love and a lot to discover. Automatic winding courtesy of the Platinum Micro Rotor. It has an 80 hour power reserve and as you can see many more fine flourishes of satin finish and interior angle on the dial side with Grand Faux enamel dials for the hours, minutes, and seconds. Ma well you can see manual wind if you wish. It's not quite as quirky as the logical one. You have the one crown at two o'clock that allows you to wind the watch or set the watch. So you don't have the separate flank winding system as you'll find on the logical one. The watch is thin at 12.9 millimeters thick, so you can wear it as a dress watch. And with a traditional size at 39.5 millimeters, it's a wonderful piece if you're into independent horology. You want finish that represents the best available, but you don't necessarily want an enormous timepiece. This watch has a measure of discretion. That said, if you are proud of your wrist, and you want the essential Romain Gautier watch, the one that took the complication prize at the GPHG 2013, you want the Logical One. And this, from the Heritage series of Logical Ones, is as good as it gets. White gold with a lovely sculpted, media blasted, and hand finished case flank, 43 millimeters. You can see the dial has a frosted pocket watch like uh, gilded set of bridges and plates. And then we have more interior angles where two bevels meet than you can shake a stick at, but the 
ambition of the finishing here grows as you can see one two three sharp exterior angles there are many more interior and exterior angles on the reverse side of the watch power reserve indicator on the reverse side open barrel showing the mainspring and then this power reserve is for 46 hours of autonomy i mentioned the winding system at nine o'clock with the insight the insight doesn't have that the logical one does you push the trigger and it winds from the barrel to the snail cam fuse. This is a reimagining of the fuse constant force mechanism from the late Renaissance. As the barrel runs down, it pulls a larger diameter of the snail cam, which increases the mechanical advantage, which allows the barrel, even as its energy diminishes, to apply the same amount of force to the escape. And it works just like the Remontoir system on FP Journe's watch, but it's continuous, whereas the Journe system replenishes the energy every second. This is continuous because of the use of a chain. You can also see that the chain itself is entirely black polished and I'll do my best to show this is the greatest extent possible you can see there are ruby jewels inside the chain there are 26 additional jewels inside the chain yes you better believe you're getting grand for enamel for the dials and then if you look at the bridge on which the fusee system is set up you could see that it is satinated on its ends black polished on its center and it features one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve interior angles and that's before we get to the reverse side of the watch a truly special timepiece and a real breakthrough model for the industry as a whole. This was a reimagining of high horology, and you can really see that same degree of Baroque beveling on this watch, and you can see it best perhaps from this angle that you found on the Insight Micro Rotor a minute ago, only there's more to bevel here, so you get more of that fine finish. Throw it on my wrist, it's a big watch, there, there's no doubt. It's about 52 millimeters lug tip to lug tip, so I'd recommend it for a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger, though as you can see, it is sloped and fairly low slung on the wrist. It's not a super thick watch, so you should be able to wear it underneath most cuffs. Let's talk about two sports watches from Breitling from very different ends of the historical spectrum. Introduced in either 1952 or 1954, depending on who you believe, the Breitling Navitimer is the icon of Breitling. This one, stainless steel and 46 millimeters in diameter, represents recent production in as much as it has tone-on-tone -tone registers, the B01 movement, and a display case back. George Kern wants you to know that when you get a current Breitling with a chronograph function and a mechanical movement of their own fabrication, you will get the tone-on-tone -tone dial. So here we have an inverse panda. We have the circular slide rule, which is a logarithmic scale flight calculator that can be used to mul mostly multiply and divide. And then we get a 70-hour power reserve, automatic winding, vertical clutch, column wheel, chronometer certified B01 caliber. And though it was not originally designed for display case backs, you can see it is a very good looking movement. So not designed to be seen, but it holds up well under scrutiny. Now as a 46, this is a big watch. It takes after the big Navitimers of the late 60s, and this is very much in the vein of those historic big Navitimers. It's a big watch, but it actually makes sense, because if you're going to use the slide rule, and it's easy to use, it helps to have a bigger dial that's easier to view, more legible. So this is a functionally large pilot's watch that represented the state of the art in 1954 or 52. I happen to believe 54, many, including Breitling, say 52. That said, in 2013, Breitling updated its modern-day pilot's watch. This is the Aerospace Evo, 43 millimeters in black titanium. Incredibly, it is only 10.9 millimeters thick. You can see that same screw-fixed captive bezel construction that we saw in the Zinn. Super strong. It resists accidental snap-off of the bezel. You have to dismantle it and take out the screws. 100 meters water-resistant unidirectional bezel. It is surprisingly versatile and water-resistant for a pilot's watch. Now, it features a minute repeater. It is a super quartz caliber. I'm gonna talk over the repeater now because I don't have all day. And this watch is remarkably loud. It is a 70 decibel electronic minute repeater for times when you just have a moment to flick your watch. You can't actually discern in the cockpit while skiing, while underwater, while driving. You can't necessarily discern what's on the dial of a watch, analog or digital, though the watch gives you both, which is why it has that electronic minute repeater. You simply turn the crown, 
to cycle through the functions. I'll get close here so you can better see it. But you get a perpetual calendar. You get a countdown timer that sounds an alarm. You get a second time zone. You get a chronograph. You get an alarm that you can set for a specific time of day. You can go straight up analog or you can go analog and digital. And of course, you can change the relationship between those two displays. The watch, of course, does feature a backlight in addition to Superluminova, it has both. So there's a lot to love here. A very handsome watch on both sides with cool conversion factors. And again, the water resistance makes this different than most pilots' watches, which cannot be used in the water. And here you can see that although it does feature a backlight, it also features conventional Luminova, so you can easily discern the time even if you don't want to drain down the battery. Super quartz, what does that mean? It means the watch is going to be accurate to about 10 seconds a year. Standard quartz is accurate to about 15 seconds per month. And yes, it is thermocompensated. It is also a quartz chronometer, something very, very few quartz watches can boast. This timepiece is extraordinary in every way, and it is what a modern day pilot would use as a backup instrument for actual aviation. Let's turn back the clock one more time to the late 1950s, 1959, when aviators, within reason, and with some access, in the case of the Blancpain, could theoretically have had the reference 806 Navitimer or the Air Command. Now, the Air Command was built in very small numbers. The 806 with AOPA winds, a black on black dial, and syringe hands with a small beaded bezel, uh, this would have been a somewhat more common timepiece. That said, these timepieces are rare instances of unrelated brands channeling the same genre in the same era, and that makes them interesting to me. This right here, of course, is the Breitling reference 806 1959 re-edition, 1,900 159 pieces, 40 millimeters in stainless steel, launched in 2019. The watch has a plexiglass crystal, no date dial, a Fotina look that actually works, white lacquered syringe style hands, and as with the earliest nav timers, you have black on black, so you don't have an inverse panda thing. You actually have black registers on a black dial. You have the three minute increments on the minute dial for calculating long distance phone call costs. And then of course the plexiglass crystal dramatically domed and a small beaded bezel. There were both small and large beads. 1950s Navitimers, and you can see this is the small. It is a B09 caliber, which is the manual wind version of the B01, so it's still a three-day power reserve, vertical clutch, column wheel, chronometer certified movement. They just do you the favor of not printing a book on the dial. The timepiece is extraordinarily easy to wear and very comfortable, with a lovely contrasting stitch calfskin strap and brown throat on the wrist, very comfortable, nice and low slung with the manual wind movement, and outstanding pusher feel. A real good looking watch and of course the original watch designed in conjunction with the AOPA it features AOPA like wings on the center even if it is not expressly labeled aircraft owners and pilots association on the shield this is a very cool watch if you love the vibe and you love the era but you want to go a little bit bigger and up market there's the Blancpain Air Command dedicated to a watch that was built in very low numbers more as a concept uh, for military customers in the late 1950s than an actual Production watch. The Air Command you see here uses the caliber 388, which is based on the F385 found in the Bathyscaphe chronograph, which means, like the original, it is a flyback chronograph. Unlike the original, it's an automatic wind. It's got a 50 hour power reserve, six position adjustment, anti magnetic silicon hairspring, beats weight 36,000 vibrations per hour, and though distantly based on the Frederic Piguet 1185, it has a full balance bridge. Uh, it has a high beat rate that is considerably higher at 36K than the 21.6 of the Frédéric Piguet. It has hacking seconds, which the Piguet does not have, and a silicon hairspring, which the Piguet does not have. It also has a full balance bridge. The Piguet does not have a full balance bridge. This is a tougher movement. Now, you can see it is gorgeous in its finish. This is not just a display case back. It's a movement actually worthy. As you can see, the beveling is a mile wide, and that on a Swatch Group brand product. Blancpain finishing is hugely underrated. The screw heads are finished the same grade as You'll find on a Patek Philippe, and they use a lovely satin spiral finish across the bridges rather than Cote de Genève. You can see a black polished column wheel, and it uses vertical clutch engagement, so it's very smooth to start and crisp to actuate. The bezel, which has a ceramic fill, is bi-directional, just as it would have been historically. The watch is 42.5 millimeters, so close to the original. It's only about 
0.5 millimeters larger. So this is a very true to history watch. And you can see the timepiece wears easily on my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference. It's not thick and that's to its advantage. Though it is large, I would not wear it on a wrist smaller than 15 centimeters circumference. Which watch will you choose? Well, I'm not gonna make the choice for you, but I'm gonna make the choice easier by giving you a loom shot. That is the Blancpain. As you can see, its entire bezel is loomed within the ceramic, and that is the Breitling. The Breitling also features a slide rule calculator bezel, and once you get handy with this, you will be able to beat your friends to the calculated tip at a restaurant, even if they're using their smartphones. Once you get handy with this thing, it's second nature and super simple. Sticking for a moment with Blancpain, this is a model launched in 2010, and it represents perhaps the most elaborate of the 50 Fathoms family of dive watches. This, of course, is the 50 Fathoms complete calendar. It is a flyback, a complete calendar, a moon phase, 300 meters rated, a dive watch with a spectacular blue billowing rose lathe pattern at center. You can see guilloche within a satin outer track, applique white gold indices, white gold hands, complete calendar. You've got a radial date indicator. You've got the day, you've got the month, and of course you have the moon phase. It is a flyback chronograph, which means you can reset and restart. And though it looks like it has screw down pushers, in fact, it does not need screw downs to achieve its 300 meter rated depth. The bezel is big, beautiful, and sapphire capped with a cambered sapphire. And as you can see, they cut no corners with the sailcloth strap held in by screws, hex screws no less, and bars so it will not separate. You can also see the underside of the sailcloth strap with a lovely and supple rubber inlay so it will not aggress against your wrist. Here's a system introduced in the mid 2000s on Blancpain calendar watches. It is an underlug pusher system that removes the unsightly dimples from the case band and then allows you to make adjustments to the calendar. You can see I'm adjusting the indicated date. You can make these adjustments without a pusher tool. It'll also lock out the calendar adjustments during the overnight danger zone when you should not be accidentally setting using these pushers. They lock themselves out automatically. The movement is gorgeous. The F66B with a handsome white gold Nautilus shell motif. And then underneath, it's based on the Frederic Piguet 1185. And you can see the finish is on a high standard, just as we saw on the Air Command, albeit a little bit of an older architecture. It's still automatic winding vertical clutch and column wheel with a very crisp and positive column wheel feel. Now, this watch is big but it's not broad across the wrist. It is thick, however. So I'm gonna recommend this watch for a wrist no smaller than mine. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference and it's a really solid piece. On the wrist, in the hand, it feels indestructible. It's exactly what a super premium dive watch should feel. And of course, none of its diving features are compromised by the additional of complexity. You can see that as with the Air Command, the bezel is fully loomed here. It's under sapphire, so even more luminescent paint can be used, and it's protected from scratching by the sapphire itself. You can also see that the sub-registers have been loomed, which is uncommon, but wonderfully welcome. Back in the 1980s, Hanno Bircher was the man at IWC. He designed a generation of IWC watches that came to define the brand's comeback era from the nadir of the quartz crisis. This watch actually includes a number of innovations. It is the IWC 3751 Da Vinci Retropont, a timepiece that combines a Valshu 7750 base with the IWC Kurt Klaus synchronized perpetual calendar system with the Richard Habring split seconds system introduced by IWC with the Hanno Bircher design and a moon phase disc of aventurine glass with a lovely rhodium coated dial that's darker than standard gray. So this is not a standard silver or a standard gray. It's got a lovely metallic sheen to it. A perpetual calendar system. Note the use of appliques on the dial and the fact that we're gonna as close as we can here, it is a true vintage tritium dial. So this is not Fotina, this is the real thing. 39 millimeters with hinge style lugs, sometimes known as Vendome lugs. This this watch is a platinum limited edition of 500 pieces and it uses a plexiglass dive watch style crystal to 
envelop all of the hands that fall underneath it. That was the idea between the plexiglass. Dramatic camber at a time when manufacture of sapphire crystals did not allow this kind of topographical modeling. The watch has a wonderful feel on the wrist as the lugs make it super easy to wear on a small wrist. A wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference can wear this IWC Classic. And I mentioned the Kurt Klaus synchronized perpetual calendar system. I should explain what that is if you're new to this system. Kurt Klaus is an IWC watchmaker, today watchmaker emeritus, and he designed a fully synchronized perpetual calendar system whereby you can simply adjust the date, everything, day, date, month, year, decade, moon phase, is mechanically programmed so when you set a date, it's always coordinated to represent a real day, date, month, moon phase and year. So if you can adjust the date using the quick set on your Rolex date just, you can adjust the perpetual calendar on this watch. If you set the date for the current month you're in and the year is correctly set, even the moon phase will back into the correct position and you have one point of control for doing all of that and that is the crown. The bezel is lovely with a gadroon that's circumferential or a, a, a double domed profile, vintage mushroom style pushers which I love and it retains all of the underlying virtues of the 77 50 movement, including durability, winding efficiency, longevity, easy service, and the hacking second system. I feel like Laurent Ferrier is the independent we need to remember, and remember well. This was one of the hottest independent brands about seven years ago, and I feel like we need to recall just how good the brand can be when it sticks to its strengths. Not sports watches and not minute repeaters, but fine, high-grade dress watches with innovative engineering, and that is exactly what we have right here. This is the Laurent Ferrier Galley Classic Tourbillon Double F for Double F face. So you can see we have a dial that is lustrous in enamel. On top of that, you can see there are applique, breguet style Arabic numerals, blued hands at center, a lovely open dial as in 2017, Laurent Ferrier introduced a dial side tourbillon. Previously, they had always been case back, very traditional, but they introduced a dial side tourbillon in 2017 so people could appreciate the watch and show it off without necessarily removing it from their wrist. So you can see there's a lovely chaton at the center, a golden chaton holding the pivot jewel, which is a Nod to the pocket watch era. The flanks of the bridge are satinated, the edges are beveled, the screws are black polished, and when you turn it over, you can see that the actual underside bridge for the tourbillon is literally identical to that used for mid 20th century Patek Philippe observatory chronometer tourbillon calibers that were built. That is Laurent Ferrier, the watchmaker, not the brand, but the man, paying tribute to his original atelier and his original employer. He was a complication specialist at Patek Philippe for decades, and he brought that experience to his own brand starting in 2008. And the double spiral tourbillon was his first watch. This is still the double spiral tourbillon. You can see there's a hairspring, and then there's another hairspring with two 180 degrees apart when it's in such position that one hairspring wants to speed up the escapement. The other one, in the opposite position, by virtue of its position of gravity, will want to slow down the escapement. So because they are always directly opposed and acting equal but opposite, they reduce to nothing the effect of gravity on the chronometric precision of the watch. You can see here, as with the Romain Gautier, beautifully wide black polish, and the bevels on Laurent Ferrier are circus quality. They're that good. They're an absolute freak show and among the best available. So are the Cote de Genève, which are big, broad, and luminous. The kind you'll find, albeit in a different material, on, for instance, Moritz Grossmann, truly broad and lustrous Cote de Genève waves. Then you can see that the uh, tourbillon bridge is satinated on its top. On its opposite side, you can see that there is a little bit of specular finish where it has a single post, and then there's beveling on its edge with one, two, three, four interior angles and more on the tourbillon carriage itself. Wind it up, manual wind, 80 hour power reserve, very special. An easy watch to wear with the Galet case, 41 millimeters on the wrist, smoothed like a pebble over eons in a bubbling brook, that's where the name Galet comes from. Organic, gorgeous, from a brand that only makes about 170 watches a year, exclusivity is assured. But then again, at Kari Voudelainen's atelier, Roughly one-third of that number get completed each year. This is the 2013 V8R. The V8R, basically the Vantuit, the 2011 
Voodoo debut. It is the Vaunt Wheat, but with a different dial, a different movement, same lovable corn de vache style or cow horn lug, 39 millimeter case. This one in rose gold, a 25 piece limited edition. The dial is black lacquered with applique rose gold, tri Arabic numerals and indices. You can see the Voodoo and hands, which are absolutely gorgeous, made of a combination of fire blued steel and rose gold. They are assembled from hand-finished individual components to achieve that complexity. Power reserve indicator, uh, 45 to 48 hours, and then there is a Maltese Cross style stop works inside. The stop works prevents the watch from discharging past a point at which Voodoo feels it is no longer chronometrically accurate. So whereas a standard Vontweet has a 65 hour power reserve, this one's about 45. Manual wind, big slow beating balance, and by big I mean huge. You can see it's free sprung with a handmade overcoil hairspring, and then below you can see not one but two blued escape wheels just like the Breguet natural escapement of 1802 there is no Swiss lever in here it is done entirely by wheels that impulse the balance directly in its direction of travel minimal friction improved chronometry and regularity and you can see that the finishing here is world-class the bridges have been frosted I believe with a wire brush technique you can see the Voodoo and nameplate as well as the individual numbering that is solid rose gold satinated and inked you can see black polish on the screw heads but also on the full bridge for the balance. You'll appreciate the fact that there are one, two, and that if you count underneath the balance bridge, four sharp interior angles. And just with some of our other standouts today, the unglage, whether on the steel of the bridge over the balance, or the brass of the bridge over the barrel in the train, the unglage an absolute mile wide. You could drive an 18-wheeler across that bevel. It's finished the old school way too with gentian wood and diamond paste. Truly special stuff and absolutely unique. Again, Voodoo and making about 45 to 55 watches a year. One of the truly great AHCI independent masters of our age. And this timepiece, wonderfully warm with a combination of rose, black, silver, and blue tones on its dial side. Absolutely special. And again, one of 25. <sighs> that said, if you want to see the original cow horn lug, Rocket on a Vacheron Constantin Corn de Vache. Reference 5,038.5 millimeters in stainless steel. The modern day Corn de Vache came out in 2015 in platinum, a tribute to the historic reference, a 6087 that was only made in about three dozen copies in yellow, rose gold, and platinum. So for 2018, the Hodinkee version came out in steel, and then in 2019, Vacheron launched its own interpretation of the steel corn de vache. Representative of the 6087, the watch has that lovely cow horn style profile, meaning that it is the consummate dress watch and the consummate Vacheron. Vacheron doesn't have one enduring design that has stayed in the catalog over the decades. Its continuous and unbroken aesthetic tradition has been outrageous and gorgeous lug design. Innovative, distinctive, original, and even as the styles of lug have varied, always striking and compelling. And the Corn de Vache represents the best of the line. The hands also have a wonderful barrel-shaped vaulted arc over their center that's unusual from a group brand. Of course, Vacheron owned by Richemont. You expect these kind of three-dimensional hand-finished hands from the likes of Roger Smith or Kerry Voodoo and you don't expect that level of depth in hand from a group brand, but Vacheron delivers. Now, the dial features a couple of different tones of silver, as you can well see as I move it through the light. Applique stick indices in white gold, uh, two Roman numerals, 12 and 6. Sunken sub-registers, the blued hands record the chronograph, and then you can see there's a tachymeter scale outboard. The crystal is slightly domed and cambered to recall a vintage plexiglass, and then we flip the watch over, and we have Geneva Hallmark caliber 1142. It's based on the Monia 2310 a Bausch, which as the Omega 321 went to the moon. This is to a higher standard though. Overcoil hairspring, free sprung, five position adjustment, Geneva Hallmark finish. And you can see that the column wheel itself has a Maltese cross at its center. Pusher feel and sound are as good as it gets here. Manual wind, 48 hour power reserve, 21 six beat rate, and everything the best available. From the satinated and beveled steel components of the chronograph to the Cote de Genève and bevel rhodium coated 
brass bridges of the time-telling functions. Everything here is the best available. And Vacheron, always considered to be a great attablisseur with a long tradition of taking calibers originally invented elsewhere and through fine finish and precise adjustment, making them their own. You can no longer get the Lemagne 2310 in a Patek, but Vacheron, in a few copies per year, still offers it on some flagship models. Reach out to T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing detail of that steel corn device or any watch you see on this program. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.